All right, a sealed cylinder contains nitrogen gas at 1.00 times 10 to the third kPa pressure and a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. When the cylinder is left in the sun, the temperature of the gas increases to 50 degrees Celsius. What is the new pressure? Okay, let's write down what the problem gave us. We had a pressure, we'll call that P1, of 1.00 times 10 to the third kPa. And at that same time, we had a temperature, let's call it T1, of 20 degrees Celsius. Then at a different time, after the cylinder had been in the sun, we got a different temperature, we'll call that T2, and that is 50 degrees Celsius. And then the problem asks, what is the new pressure? So at this second time, P2, what is the pressure? So that's what we're trying to find. Now this is a gas law problem, and it's specifically going to be Gay-Lussac's law that we'll be using. But if you don't know that specific law by heart, you can always start with the combined gas law. P1 times V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. In this problem, we don't know anything about volume. It must not be changing. This cylinder must be a fixed volume. So because the volume doesn't change, we can cancel that out in our combined gas law. It's not going to affect our problem. So if we pretend like it's basically not there, we end up with P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Now that is Gay-Lussac's law and that's what we're going to use. So let's plug in everything we know. For P1, we have 1.00 times 10 to the third kPa, and that is over T1, which is 20 degrees Celsius. Now for gas laws, our temperatures must be in Kelvin. So we're going to have to convert this by adding 273, and that gives us 293 Kelvin, so that is what we will put in our equation. Okay, and then on the other side, we have P2 up top. Well, that is what we are solving for, so you can just leave that as P2 or X or whatever. And then on bottom, T2 is 50 degrees Celsius, but again, we have to convert that to Kelvin. So plus 273 gives us 323 Kelvin and that goes on the bottom. Okay, so let's isolate for our variable. How do we do that? Well, we need to get P2 by itself. So let's multiply by 323 Kelvin on both sides. And that will effectively cancel out everything else on the right side besides P2, which we're solving for. Okay, now let's look at our units. On the left side, we have Kelvin on top and we have Kelvin on bottom. Those are going to cancel and we're going to be left with KPA as our units in the end. And now we can do the math. You're going to put in your calculator 323 times 1.00 times 10 to the third. And then we're gonna divide by what's on the bottom, which is 293, hit equals, and you should get around 1,102 and some change. So P2 equals, if we turn our answer into scientific notation, 1.0. 1.0 times 10 to the third. And again, our units are KPA. So final answer, what is the new pressure? That would be 1.10 times 10 to the third KPA. All right, if you wanna see another example, click in the top right. Please like this video if it helped you in any way. Feel free to look in the doobly-doo below for additional help and resources. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified for new videos, and thank you, thank you so much for watching.